Hello and welcome to my Hasbro Hotel reviews. We'll be talking about every single episode, any references, Easter eggs, sometimes you'll see my Sona. Which leads us into episode 8, the season finale, the show must go on. Picking up right after the end of the last episode, the hotel has to defend against the extermination. Shenanigans ensue. The episode begins with Charlie trying to rally the troops, now armed with Alistair's cane. The weak points of an exorcist is their face, their armpits, and their thighs. The hotel group are preparing and being watched by Vox. Alistair still glitches cameras. They're watching them via a drone, which I kind of have to admit I didn't see the first time, despite being blue against a sea of red. Charlie's concerned what's going to happen, as Serpentius rolls out dressed like Napoleon. Nifty's told if she sees an angel, stab it. It's kind of crazy it took this long to say angel dust, angel joke. Even Cherry Bomb decided to join the fight, which kind of makes me wish she was here earlier. The group has a few drinks before the fight tomorrow, as Alistair and Nifty are being cute together. Dumbed. <laughs> I dub thee King Roach. Oh, I've seen something like this, but this one is clearly better because it's held together with real roaches, leaves, sticks, and chewing gum. Pentius is still crushing hard on Cherry. Charlie ships it. Please don't die tomorrow, okay, bye. I hear he's got two dicks. That is biologically accurate to snakes. Charlie at Angel's door crying that she couldn't save him faster. On the door, there's a photo of this bitch with him and Charlie, showing he's a little unsure about her, but these bitches, his besties, Husk, and surprisingly Nifty and Serpentius, and my baby with Fat Nuggets, there's even a Fat Nugget sticker, Maggie tries to cheer Charlie up, which leads into a reprise of more than anything. It's very short, but very sweet. And we finally get a kiss between the two. The next day, the exorcists are preparing, and him now has a pastel black dress thing rather than the white one he used to wear. We also appreciate that all the exorcists have unique weapons, unique horns, and even some of them have the X over the eye on the opposite eye. Even the detail of some of them have different body types. Quit Vaggie's cut mouth that her ass! You just, just chill, loot, fuck. And they head out. At the hotel, everyone has new costumes on. Charlie has a sleeveless dress with arm sleeve things, along with a crown. She's armed with, I guess, Lucifer's shield, because it has apples and wings. Vachy's wearing, like, a modified exorcist uniform. And despite last episode, she has to learn how to fight with long hair. She's now wearing a ponytail. Cherry and Angel are dressed like they're going to deliver newspapers in the 1920s. And Alistair activates a big shield. No hotel starts off good in this fight because they actually know about the Angel's weakness that they don't. The rest of the episode's one big action scene, and everyone gets a little bit of time to shine, even Cherry with shrapnel angel bombs, and Nifty doing her part, just for Adam to one punch and destroy the shield. The V's are still watching, and Vox and Velvet are basically wearing their casual wear. Adam and Alistair square off, and we can see the detail of the tentacles emerging from Alistair actually ripping his suit. Adam's weapon is his guitar. He's actually losing at first, but he has one good shot. What just happened? Fuck. And another one, so Al retreats. As Vox is going ballistic about this. The Campbells are indeed eating the exorcist. Serpentius calls Vaggie Vagatha, which was her original name in the pilot, but she says that's not her name now. Charlie literally glitter bombs someone and then shoots fireworks at other people like she did in the pilot. Adam also has holy beams. Serpentius knows what to do. Kiss Cherry Bomb. Pentius has six egg boys in his ship already. We see two earlier and one gets destroyed, so how many are there? Pentius is going to use the death ray on Adam, but Adam shoots first. It is pretty sad. But Viv did reveal the fact that one of the main cast would have died in the finale, and Pentius kind of is the obvious choice here. He did come into the show later and wasn't even meant to be a recurring character in the pilot. The scene is still pretty sad, even if it is kind of obvious who the red shirt was. Or I guess blue shirt, because this show loves red. So Charlie summons Razzle Dazzle, one fiery transformation, and they become dragons. Becky and Charlie ride on them, and before you think this is cool, one of them gets killed immediately. 
This death is a little less effective because Razzle Dazzle basically were just background accessories that never really had time to do anything. Boot and Vaggy square off. Charlie and Adam square off as she's in her full demon form. Armed with a trident with an apple and snake on it appropriately. And she also has a tail. Maggie's doing kind of bad at first, but then she's able to turn around and collapse some of the building onto loot. Maggie allows Lou to live with her failure. And we remember that the exorcist masks are actually digital. Lou rips her arm off to escape from the rubble. Everyone's doing pretty bad, but then Lucifer shows up to save the day. Broken mask moment. Pimpin', not simpin'. See, you mess with my daughter, and now I am going to fuck you! Wait, what did I say? During Adam and Lou's fight, Lou transforms into a goat. This is a reference to the fact that the devil is known as the goat, mostly due to Christians trying to destroy the cult of Pan in Greece, which is why stereotypical devils look like satyrs. A snake, because the Garden of Eden. A bird. A yellow hammer is known as the devil's bird. Its eggs have little scribbles on them, which a lot of people used to interpret as satanic messaging. A horse, which might be a reference to Spindle Horse, or a thing I'd never heard of. And a squid, probably because only the goat and snake actually have any reason and everything else just is ha-ha funny. Mid-transformation, Adam uses his beams and cuts the hotel in half. Charlie falls, but is caught by her dad, which causes them to activate their devil triggers. And then with, well, I guess his helmet, now fully destroyed, we see that he's actually fully human-looking, and he's meant to look like his voice actor, Alex Brightman. Adam's upset because he's not getting the respect he thinks he deserves for being the first man. No one cares, and he gets stabbed. By Nifty. Even the V's are surprised at this. Lou tells the angels at GTFO. So, who's up for pancakes? Who wants pancakes? <laughs> Brandon Rogers reports to everyone that the extermination is cancelled. In this crowd shot, we see Baxter, we remember from the second episode. This is the guy who was stabbing the other guy in the first episode. And here is Arachnus, Angel Dust brother. He was originally meant to be part of the main cast, and much like Molly's cameo, I like it. Headlines say it all about what's going on, especially this one. Nifty is still camera shy, just like in the first episode. While digging through the ruins of the hotel, the first thing Huss looks for is a drink. And Angel looks for fat nuggets. Aw, oh, man. Which leads into the song finale. A song about we can do this and rebuild. It has a little bit of motifs from all the songs from the season. I guess Cherry is moving in full time. This is surprisingly Nifty's first time singing. Lou turns Kiki into a keyblade. When he can just, like, materialize things, well, I guess he is the devil. And Carmilla's not selling angelic weapons, she's also selling power tools. Rosie has a really old TV. The V's are happy that now the angels are gone, they can do more. They have a table with photos of the cast, including Carmilla with the demon poop emojis from the third episode, and this torn photo of Alistair, in which we can totally see Vox next to it. And we could tell it's the pilot suit because it doesn't have the needless white outlines. And speaking about Al, he's crawling around the ruins of his radio station. He's a little concerned what's going on, but he knows that he can use that hook he has on Charlie to hopefully cut his strings and unclip his wings, whatever that means. And as this Twitter user says, you can tell that all the eyeballs that have been all over the show are now staring at Al. Serpentius Memorial painting... Al returns, and everyone except Lou and Husk are happy. Vox and Valentino make out, and all three of them are probably going to do it. And the Hasbun Hotel is restored better than ever. Some card symbols for Husk, some music notes for Charlie, an apple for Lou, who's probably going to move in full-time, X's for Angel, Nifty's Eye, some angel wings like Vaggy, who make the key, Alistair's Lovecraftian radio tower, and out front, we have a petrified Razzle, or Dazzle, I don't really know which one's which. But then Twist, up in heaven, Emily and Sarah are just, like, hanging out or whatever. And Pentius ascends, becoming a winner, now with pastels, and a bunch of heart symbols all over him. Cause he fought for love! 
Also, Twisting Trail of Hearts. He also has a lot less eyes. I think he does like the Vulcan salute. Emily is excited. Sarah is confused and scared. Now, double twist, since Adam is dead, his deal is done, with Lilith, who is also in heaven. The deal probably relating to the, the Hellborn are not to be killed. And then, if she's in heaven, I don't know where Eve is. But that's for next season. And overall, this is a pretty decent finale. It has a lot of emotion, pretty good songs, fun action. Everyone gets a little bit of time to shine, the animation's great. Adam's a pretty good villain. Overall, this finale gets a 9.5 out of 10. Remember to hit the like button, share the video with your friends, comment any of your opinions, and hit the subscribe button if you're new.